Joshua's a coward. Usek's a pussy. And Dylan White don't want to fight. Hey, Ring Siders, what is going on? This is your host, Boxing's Objective Observer. And welcome back to Ringside Stories. Or if you're new, we make content regarding boxing through mini documentaries, backstories, and much more. So if you enjoy that type of content, feel free to subscribe, thumbs up, and hit that notification bell for the latest here on Ringside Stories. Thanks so much for your support in advance and welcome to the channel. We have found ourselves in a heavyweight heap. Whether Anthony Joshua will step aside and if Usyk will go and fight Tyson Fury for the undisputed heavyweight world championship next i'm being asked this question over and over again i do not know the answers to it i'm ready to fight this weekend i've been training three weeks how long does a man need to train joshua's a coward who's ex a pussy and dylan white don't want to fight so if you can prove me wrong get to fucking fighting you pair of cowards you're all cowards you're all bum dossers either fight or do one pack of wet lettuces. In response, the body snatcher Dillian White went to social media talking about he said, she said BS, non-verbally addressing Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua, and promoter Eddie Hearn. I'm just gonna keep videoing until one of these cowards decide to fight. You're all cowards, shithouse bums. I don't care who I fight. AJ, Usek, Dylan White, or any of them. Fight me. I'm the best man that's ever lived. These are all coward bum dossers. I'll annihilate the lot of yous and destroy yous. Submit yous. Tap you bitches out. Come and fight. Strong fighting words from Tyson Fury as expected. However, when it comes to the Gypsy King's next fight, that are out of the control of any particular individual. So today's episode is to offer some much needed context through a timeline, including some of the protagonists, Frank Warren, Eddie Hearn, Tyson Fury, Alexander Usyk's promoter, Alexander Krashuk, Anthony Joshua, and boxing journalist, Garrett A. Davies. Shout out to them, shout out to Boxing Social and IFL TV for conducting the interviews. Let's get into it. He won't be defending his WBC title. Uh, there's a problem there. Not of our making, or his making, I should say. WBC and Dillian White are in arbitration. That hearing's not set to be heard until March. Um, we can't negotiate. It's all very well, you know, Eddie Hombie's nonsense about negotiating. Um, how can you negotiate when no one, when the WBC haven't said what the splits are? So in his mind, he thinks he's getting 45%. In our mind, it's 20% based upon the purses, of his previous purses that were lodged under WBC um, regulations. Um, and they won't determine what the percentages are until the arbitration. So until that happens, we can't negotiate. And that doesn't mean the fight's gonna take place in April. We've got to negotiate, book a venue, depending on who, who, who wins the, if we can negotiate something amicably, or who wins the purse bit, and that won't go until June. So Tyson will fight, but not for the WBC title. Talk about obviously White against Fury. Will it take place? We'll have to see. A um, lot of discussions going on behind the scenes. And yeah, that's where we're at. I know you're not going to, obviously, it just indicates that you guys are working on a potential deal. That's why it's a delay. Yeah, there, there's a lot. There's a lot of reasons why the bid's been delayed. Um, I wouldn't say that the conversations are nearing a deal for White against Fury. But as you know, there's, you know, um, arbitrations and legal cases and, and, and appeals into various things. And that's probably the bigger reason. For the delay, uh, there is a desire from some people to try and make the Fury versus Usyk fight. Um, there's a lot of things that would need to take place for that fight to get the go ahead, um, and that's not necessarily the, the, well, it's not the delay to the purse bid. Um, but we're not looking to see if Fury White happens first to put a date together for Joshua against Usyk, no. Okay, so are you saying that there's still a potential of a regional... I'm telling you there's still a desire from some people to try and get that fight together. Okay, and the likeliness of that? I think it's the like, you know, the, the favourite right now is Fury against White and AJ against Usyk. 
anything can happen. You know, in these closing periods of time, leading up to D-Day or Crunch Day or Purse Bid or whatever you want to call it, this is where the business happens. So, expect the unexpected, but as I've said to you, my, my gut feeling is that you'll see those two fights, but you, you never know what's going to happen over the next couple of days. Well, all I could tell you is that everybody in boxing wants to see the unification match between uh, Tyson and Usyk. I mean, that's, that's, I want to see that as a fan. Um, so I'm on the same page with that one. Well, we've, we've been on talks for Fury Usyk fights since November. And uh, sometime we were like close to making the fight, then everything fell down, then we came back again. And now there's no big certainty about it. Uh, we are in negotiations 100%. Uh, we are like uh, close uh, close to finding the solution uh, but uh, it's just about you know it's all about negotiations we talk we discuss we try to find the solution uh, but at this stage i can't confirm that uh, uh, Usyk is fighting fury next it's, listen, it's, it's a saga isn't it and i just get and i know everybody gets bored of it and i just think sometimes the need to Keep, just keep things, you know, between all of us, and then hopefully we can get it over the line. We'll see. There's only three fights out there, really, that should be being talked about, and that's Fury and White if it can, they can get it over the line, um, Fury and Usyk, um, which Alexander Krasiuk has revealed they've been in talks about since November, believe it or not, and uh, Usyk and Joshua. Those are the three fights that are causing so much consternation um, in the heavyweight division, Umar, and, and it's involving the world's biggest promoters and, and the, the four biggest names in the heavyweight division right now. It's very hard to discern right now. I mean, Frank Warren's tight-lipped, Bob Arum doesn't want to speak about it, Eddie Hearn is shtum about it, but Eddie didn't say a lot. He said expect the unexpected. He didn't say expect the expected. So, I mean, I've done a story this week in which, you know, my sources have led me to believe that there's, there is, or there has been talk in the background about Anthony Joshua stepping aside, which I don't see anything wrong in, frankly, because he's got a very, very difficult rematch uh, with Alexander Usyk if he takes it. Um, he's also got a golden opportunity if he takes step aside, if that really is on the table. Um, and, you know, because he, he gets the chance to fight for the undisputed title within that, if that deal is done, um, after Fury and Usyk fight for all the belts. So, um, anyone pillorying him for stepping aside is wrong. And it, it's, it's an amazing business move. It's a very confusing situation and a lot will become clearer tomorrow night, I believe you know, at high noon in Mexico City, basically, with where the WBC are based. So, I've never known a situation quite as confusing as this in, in lots of ways. And, you know, I wouldn't say it doesn't help the sport, but it's obviously about huge money deals and, you know, the, the, the giant chess pieces moving amongst the politics and the promotions and, and the rivalries within the heavyweight division and, and amongst the, as I say, the biggest promoters in the world. You know what's bad about all these interviews I see? I see certain interviews that quote what I said. And I think to myself, I ain't done no interviews. Where did this person get this information from? I'm hearing people saying, AJ accepts 15 million to step aside. I ain't signed no contract. I ain't seen no contract. So as it stands, stop listening to the bullshit until it comes from me. I'm the man in control of my destiny. I'm the man that handles my business. I'm a smart individual and I make calculated decisions every step of the way. Don't listen to the bullshit from other sources. Well, I think it was pretty obvious that he, he didn't say in his response, absolutely, I'm taking Alexander Usyk next. He just said that he needed to see the contract and he hadn't signed anything. He didn't say, um, absolutely, I'm fighting Alexander Usyk next and that that fight is about to be announced. You know, he, he fought on September the 25th he exercised the rematch clause immediately and here we are um, in the last week in January and nothing's been signed, sealed and delivered. So, and as I said, Alexander Krusyuk, Alexander Usyk's 
promoter has said there have been talks of Fury as well. So, you know, read between the lines. It, it, it's pretty obvious that all those three fights I mentioned are all under discussion. Um, and they found it difficult to find a resolution. Hopefully, in terms of the heavyweight division, there will be more clarity concerning Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury, Dillian White, and Alexander Usyk's situation fairly soon. Tick, tick, effing tick, tock is the subject of today. Is Dylan White gonna fight me? Is Anthony Joshua gonna step aside? Let me know, because I am sick of looking at these bums. Sick of listening to their excuses. Tick, tick, tock. The time has run out the bottle. You're all getting a good hiding, cowards. What do you make of all this? Let us know in the comments below. If you're new to this channel and you enjoy this kind of content, feel free to subscribe, thumbs up, and hit that notification bell as it helps with the YouTube algorithm, i.e. inspire us to make more quality content for y'all. Now, if you've done that already, you're amazing. We already know that you are the true undisputed world champion. Till next time, Ringsiders, this is your host, Boxing's Objective Observer, Ringside Stories. Thanks for watching and have a legendary day.